Hi, I'm Pat Gunn, and this is my vlog. So, I just finished playing the third episode of Life is Strange, which is a, it's an episodic game, kind of like the Telltale games, uh, the most recent Sam and Max games, the Back to the Future games, and I think there was also a recent uh, zombie series of games uh, based off of a TV show. Uh, all of these have been fairly popular. I, I find them to be, it's an interesting format to do game, uh, in which to do games, in that I'm not sure if I really enjoyed the part of waiting a few months in between each episode of the game. That can be a little bit frustrating. It's, I'm not sure if, like, as a child, when I was just playing a game for the, or when I was getting into gaming for the first time, uh, for the first time, if I would have enjoyed like having a, a NES 8 game, like needing to wait for a few moments between, or, or wait for a few months between episodes of Ninja Gaiden or something like that. It was decent to have like these games be self-contained and then maybe there'd be a sequel. But that's not really the way these games work. The plot doesn't really come down. You're in the middle of the same plot arc uh, for this style of game. So you really have to wait. And that's kind of weird. It's more like watching TV in some ways than playing a game. In more ways than just this. In that, um, well, anyhow. Uh, so in, in the third episode, uh, you're left with a rather surprising ending. And I'm going to be a little bit spoily, but not spoil it entirely in case you haven't played the game yet and you'd like to play it. But the but life is strange is all about uh, a uh, the main character having developed some time travel abilities, and she throughout m most of the series of the game she's had the ability to step back in time maybe up to a few hours, which lets her change things and make some moderately significant changes to things happening around her. Uh, she can game reality to a certain extent, and there are hints that maybe, uh, well, I mean, she, she also jumps forward significantly uh, further as part of dreams or visions. It's not clear whether that's part of her power or whether that's a separate power, but she sees a looming disaster as part of a vision or maybe just as part of a dream um, uh, of a hurricane approaching her town. And uh, and she's jumping back and forth, uh, or I'm mean, jumping back and forth over a small period of uh, of time, but then finally in this third episode she jumps way back in the past, several years, and changes something, and uh, it ends ends up causing somebody who is dead not uh, not to be dead, but it also causes somebody who's one of her friends to be crippled which is a major downer because you've been building a rebuilding a relationship with this person throughout much of the series and now you see when you re-meet her you find that this this person who you've been building ties with is very badly injured and probably will be for the rest of her life but at, at the same time this change is bundled with uh, with her father no longer being dead. And so this raises ethical questions in that my gut instinct, uh, apart from being horrified at the whole situation of seeing this character, uh, like who is a vibrant, interesting character, kind of a messed up character, but really interesting, uh, much cooler than I probably have ever been, uh, but also kind of messed up and probably uh, like, well, somebody who probably needs to get her life at least nudged a little bit back on track. Uh, I mean, not that there's only one track for people's lives <coughs> to be on or, or anything like that, but maybe back onto a better track. Um, I'm noticing that the word track has some unusual implications implications given some of the elements of the series, but I don't want to spoil the series too badly. But in any case, my initial instinct was we have to undo this change, but then I'm, th uh, but I'm wondering, is that a selfish thing to want? Given that 
one is bringing her father back from the dead, and it's unclear. And this raises a lot of interesting, I mean, it ties into existing ethical questions of how does one deal with time travel and or alternate realities or shaping probability or other other things that dramatically expand human potential? What are the ethics that, uh, or morals that should apply to those situations? And the answers to this are not at all intuitive. In fact, I think we would struggle uh, very hard to find frameworks that, uh, that would work. I think I've probably talked about this a little bit in my previous more philosophically minded um, uh, vlog entries, but I'm not entirely certain that I have. Um, but that got me thinking even more meta, in the sense that what if we were to imagine aliens for which the notion of time travel is completely nonsensical? Like, they're intelligent creatures, they can perceive the world, relate, and, uh, relate naturally to it, think their way through it, they're, they're a lot like we are, they're, they're capable, we could have conversations with them, they have notions of fiction, and uh, they have their own way of making sense of the world, but time travel just doesn't enter into their realm of possibility. And possibly they have ways of thinking about the world that suggest or prove that it's impossible. So to them, it's a nonsensical idea. So it would seem kind of interesting that our way of thinking about the world includes both ethics, which might or might not be androcentric, and time travel, which also might or might not be androcentric. But it's that second question that seems interesting as well. Is time travel necessarily something, is it something that we should think of as androcentric? Uh, or is time travel one of those things where we can naturally, where we would think that it's part of intelligence or, or something which would probably be there in any species that, uh, uh, where a concept of it would probably be there in any, uh, in any species or, or even any culture uh, that would be um, intelligent. And one of the reasons why this is a tougher question than you might think initially is if we're going to think about how intelligence works, uh, like what it would mean for a, for a creature to be intelligent, for a culture for an individual to be intelligent, then I think one of the features of intelligence has got to be abstract thought, the ability to interact with events that didn't actually happen, counterfactuals, exploring counterfactual, uh, counterfactuals, the ability to do abstract reasoning about things that didn't actually happen like exploring other other possibilities and applying our reason to them and working out the results of applying certain mental strategies and uh, and and actual strategies to those counterfactuals and that's a useful trait uh, it's not just counterfactuals but but also things that haven't happened yet like the ability to hedge bets, uh, the ability to plan for things that haven't happened yet, this ability to create in our heads lesser versions of reality or things that act like it, and to reason through them and to plan out how we're going to handle them if they come up. It seems like this is a very similar ability to being able to play back things that happened in the past and imagine how we would have reacted if they had played out differently. So I guess we can't necessarily demonstrate that, um, that time travel is a necessary feature of intelligence or, or a necessary concept of intelligence, but the skills that we need 
uh, or at least skills that I think we can demonstrate are pretty useful for intelligence, get us very near the point, get us to the point where it, where it would be a very small step to step into, it would be a very small step to imagine time travel from the mental tools that we that we already have um, based on on the on these features of intelligence based on planning for future events uh, even based on evaluating past events and trying to learn the most that we can from them these get us get us super near the idea of time travel and and that thin conceptual border between between learning the most from past events and planning for future events and this kind of revisiting the past and being able to imagine what would what are the most likely things that might have happened given a slight tweaking of facts that thin border makes it likely i think for for intelligence to come across or at least intelligence as we know it, and intelligence with traits that we know are useful for it to come across the idea of time travel. So I, I wouldn't call it necessarily an, a, a known feature of intelligence, but one which we can think is pretty likely. So... I, I, don't, I, I don't know if... if it might be interesting to try and make a similar case for ethics being ethics and morality being uh, being so useful or necessary because we might we know that we don't always use those styles of of thought when anal uh, analyzing situations although they seem to be socially useful and I guess it's easier to imagine alternatives to them that would be functional to a certain extent but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll save that that question for another time. Are ethics or morals uh, necessary features of intelligence embedded in the social context? Or and that gets into definitional questions. And that if we found something that were similarly intelligent and conflict resolving and embedded in a social context that's not strictly hierarchical or otherwise uh, uh, like heavily positional driven. Would we be compelled or tempted to call it uh, ethical or more uh, or moral? Um, but at least we, we I think we have half of the puzzle at least semi-solved through this line of reasoning. And but yeah, I I think life is strange. It's it's a really interesting game. I'm glad I have it. It it's, it does tug at your heartstrings. But a lot of games are like that. Recently, I've also uh, played through the uh, Wolfenstein prequel. Uh, I think the the most recent Wolfenstein game uh, was the New Order, which I thought was brill. And uh, the uh, the prequel to it uh, was called, I think, the the Old Blood. And so I think I probably did a review of. Uh, of the New Order uh, before, and I commented that it felt like a puzzle game. It felt a little bit like Portal, except the puzzles weren't completely intellectual. They were action puzzles, and that each situation that you found yourself in felt like a riddle, uh, and that you had to find your way to get through a certain situation, and the regenerating health meant that it wasn't really so much of a game of attrition, so much as a game of of bounded tactics and finding your way through uh, through that situation using a semi-constrained set of of means that would get you through there, and uh, and this this prequel wasn't really much different. Uh, the scenery was beautiful. It touched on some themes, namely the undead, which it didn't expand on much. But I guess 
I don't really see this as a complaint, though. It, it was just an interesting feature of it. It touched so much on a lot of ideas that it never expanded upon. But that's probably okay. Um, I could imagine if this were the sort of media where you would do spin-offs, then this would probably be a great source material for a lot of uh, stories to spin off of it. But this is tied very tightly to the beginning of the next Wolfenstein game, and there aren't really uh, other characters that are plausible spin-off characters for for this game, and there's no real time for spin-offs for the main character here to go and have other adventures. So it it ties up its plot loose ends very tightly. Um, I do regret that there doesn't seem to be time to explore the other themes, but it's, it's a tight game, it's an interesting game, it's probably even tighter than, uh, than New Order. And unlike New Order, which I have never quite finished because the last boss is way too hard for a game that's mostly the right difficulty, um, this game just felt like it was suitably tough the whole way through. I died... Uh, through it probably the right amount, uh, right number of times. Um, I felt nervous in, in several parts, but uh, I experimented and eventually I, I got the right solution. Sometimes I had to go go off and uh, just uh, let my head clear and think for a few hours, or just let it rest for for a day and come back. But it was it was a good game. Uh, there's a new Bat uh, Batman game coming out in a few months. Um, I've been largely wrapping up the uh, the Binding of Isaac game, uh, the, the remake game, uh, the one that's not essentially written in Flash. I think that there's an expansion coming out for that soon. Um, not a lot, lot else is going on. Uh, the weather's starting to get nice, and so I'm not probably not going to be uh, playing games as much. Uh, in, in the near future. I mean, it's not just starting to get nice. It is nice. And so it's just nice to spend more time taking walks outside. Uh, you know that uh, you probably shouldn't be spending so much time inside when playing video games starts to feel like a chore uh, rather than something enjoyable. But, um, but yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, things are going pretty well. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for the subset of things in my life that I'm cool to talk about. Uh, there might be some interesting changes coming up in the next few months. Uh, hard to tell. Um, yeah, there are, there are some parts of my life which I expect to be shifting around uh, in the not quite the near term, but in more the short to medium term. Uh, I'll probably be making some changes. Uh, not sure if I'll be vlogging about them or not, since, as you can probably tell, I don't vlog very often. Um, if you do want me to vlog more often, and you have some things that you'd like me to talk about, more games, more philosophy, uh, more teaching things, I don't remember if I ever got my teaching materials up on here or not, um, uh, let me know. Bye!